Hi, I'm Christian. Welcome to our Pico A tutorial. We're doing a roguelike. We are making procedural generation and so far I really like the results. Um, so we are generating a level. It has around four rooms usually and a bunch of doors. Ooh, look at this. Huh. See, there's still some issues that I have with the ways doors are placed in our level and so that's going to be kind of like my my next big step uh, i want to kind of like t tweak a little bit the door placement uh, i didn't do the fill ends i i did some experiments here so maybe that was the problem let's let's try it again yeah so still there are some problems with the way sometimes doors are placed there is an, one issue that i don't think we can solve just that easily and that's what we see here where it's like there's a door and a space and another door can't really do anything about well i can do a lot of things about it but um, doing like an anal analysis that could, that will deal with that problem will, will take a long time what the freak look at this this is absolutely not good That is fascinating, a fascinating problem. We're gonna, I guess our um, path generation still is not perfect here. I'm not sure why this this happened like this. Oh my gosh, this is fascinating. <laughs> so, you know, part of, of generation is like procedural generation is kind of shepherding a little bit, the procedural generator, uh, making sure that it doesn't make any any flubs like this so that was a um, that that's actually concerns me that will probably will like be in the back of my mind and be i'm gonna be like obsessing about this this is this is not good that i've seen this <laughs> at the beginning of this episode oh look there's there's an issue i want to address doors next to each other that's something we can deal with in fact and i have like two screenshots for things i want to address in this episode except for maybe that the thing where it generated uh, exit and entrance in the same room that's uh, i'm not sure how that that happened <laughs> Um, yeah, let me, let me move over. Okay. So can I zoom in here, please? Yes, I can. Okay. This is, looks horrible, but whatever. Um, so, oh my gosh, every time I resize the window, it it's, goes back again. This is, this is nightmares. So you, that's, we saw that I think on a previous episode where it's like, you have a door and the doorway actually goes out and then downwards and that looks awkward that doesn't that you know you would be able to look through that door it's it's not a good doorway a doorway should be always inside a wall so there should be um a wall above and below it or le right or left to it but there shouldn't be never like a uh, you know like a diagonal path through the door that's my first problem and here's another problem that I noticed. Yeah, we kind of had that already where there's like two doors next to each other. In this specific case, it's actually even worse because it's uh, the the one door is like this and the other one is like this. So one depends on the other. So yeah, ugh, this this is a bit of a, of a tricky situation. So let us try to solve those issues. And there are some other issues I wrote down as well that we want our door generator. Whoops, uh, that I want our door generator to, to take into account. So let's go here and again I, i'm not sure why this happened this is this is gonna be i'm gonna have to look at this this map later on in between the episodes um let me t up, uh, think about the doors here so we have like this function called is door and let me expand this, this function to take care of some um some problems here so for for now it just makes sure that it's in bounds and um it it has a room map and the room map, um, ah, it looks for um, tiles around it and make sure that there is nothing in bounds and that there is no, uh, um, and there is at least one room map around it. Um, but I think we need to do more here. So one um, simple check that we have to do is, remember when we're carving the doors, we did uh, like this like weird thing where we checked for a certain signature um, for the doors, I'm not going to show the, on, on, uh, maybe I will plop in the screenshot from the last time I showed you in my, in my little notes from my book. So it kind of checks if, if the doorways in, a, in a, a wall that goes like this or a wall that goes like this. We need to do this check again. 
Why? Well, because um, after we manipulate the map and delete dead ends and, and so forth, this might have changed in the meantime. So I think it's an important step to be like, okay, let's make sure that the signature still applies to this, spa this specific slot, because maybe things have changed. You know, maybe we have moved on, uh, and we, uh, you know, we have to make sure that this is this is fine. Um, so let's do let's go here. We have to assume that the door is uh, in, in bounds. This is like neighboring tiles, but we, first we're gonna check for the um, for the signature of the door. So we're gonna go if um, bcomp. Uh, let's get the signature. So um, local sig equals get sig um, x y. If become sick, so these are the two signatures that we are talking about, where we're checking if a door is, um, if if it's in a, installed in a wall like this or in a wall like this, so it doesn't do the diagonal thing. So if the sick is this, or if not sick become, or not this, then return false. Actually, we can even do it it's easier. We're gonna return um, wait um, no that we cannot do this right no that that's not how it works because one of them has to be true um, so we're gonna go if become let's do it like this then if become sig or become this then. And only then we're gonna do the other check. And that makes maybe sense. I'm not sure which one, which of the checks is is more, costs more. Um, yeah, something like this. Okay, so let's try this. So I'm looking for maybe some abandoned doors where it kind of like it wanted maybe to draw a door but it didn't. Decided in the last moment not to do it because it didn't, uh, wasn't um, a straight door. So I'm basically looking for rooms that have entrances to them uh, that are open, where there's no door installed because the entrance is kind of like screwy. Ah, okay, I found one. So you see how, how this entrance is like way open here? Because the way the level generated itself is like, it's kind of like screwed up, kind of like the entrance to this room. So instead of installing a door here, it decided to leave this part open here, which is, I think, fine. Like, not every room has to have a door. In fact, something I would maybe consider is actually going through the doors and getting like a small percentage of the door not appearing. So some rooms are just permanently connected. That wouldn't be that bad. But yeah, it seems like um, a, a little check works. And I haven't seen any doors appearing next to other doors. There's some like situations where there's a door diagonally next to it. Um, but otherwise I'm fine. And the, the doors diagonally next to it are not that big of a deal. Um, if we, I'm gonna encounter a pr another problem where there's two doors next to each other, then we're gonna take care of that problem when it arises. But so far, this seems uh, this seems a lot better now. There is a chance, I think, that where two doors might still appear next to each other. Okay, I'm not going to spend too more too long with with the procedural generation here. Um, there's another problem that we want to do do here when we install the doors. Um, we just we not just want to make if it's walkable. We're going to make sure that this is actually a tile. So we're going to go if m get uh, d dot x comma d dot y is equals this tile one and only then we are installing the doors because again there is a small chance if you're really really bad luck and we had some really bad luck we in we ended up putting the stairs at the exact location where you know previously there was a door um, and so when going through the door function it's like oh there's a free space now uh, <laughs> let's put the door there over the st over the stairs and so it deleted the stairs. It's good that we caught this because that's that was an awkward situation. Okay, yeah, no, it seems good. Okay, so let's let's look at our list of things to do. We can like shep again. We can like this is like a shepherding episode. So remove isolated rooms. We haven't done that. L-shaped doors. We did did that. 
No doors next doors, we're not sure. We might have actually dealt with this. I think there might be a chance that there's, I, we have to check it out. Uh, like this, observe the situation. No doors on exit, definitely. Okay, let's do an experiment because here's the problem. Like me just like showing you like every, when, when I did all the research already, that's kind of like boring way of, of, of uh, doing this kind of tutorials if, because then it's like I already know how this works and there's like no, no, um, no discovery involved. That's why I don't like like these kind of unnatural tutorials. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try an experiment. Um, so what's the problem with the isolated rooms? Well, sometimes uh, let me let me let me. That's why I turned off. By the way, that, that why I turned off turned off the fill ends, just so we can see a little bit what's happening. So you see that sometimes there's rooms that have like a double wall that don't have just like one wall around, but like a, like a double wall, and that makes sense because. Um, you know, sometimes the the worm just like didn't feel like going sideways, and so they des decided not to carve into that wall. That's fine. Um, but the problem that we have here is that um, when we have a double wall, uh, all of our you know breakthrough functions, the function that makes sure that you know we're gonna break through through the other side um, and con reconnect all of the areas. Well, these kind of like depend on all the walls between different areas to be just one pixel thick. And if our generator generates walls that are two pixels thick, um, then it's possible to, to have an area that is kind of completely, completely isolated from other, all other areas through like a two pixel thick wall. And I think the one time that we had isolated rooms, there was like a two pixel tile wall, which was in a corner and it was a two pixel tile wall all uh, around this room. Bad. Um, so uh, in, order to, in order to give our uh, reconnection uh, algorithm a chance to reconnect all of the um, all of the uh, areas with each other, uh, we kind of have to be a bit more aggressive in the way we generate uh, breakthroughs. Um, so let me let me try something here. Um, I'm not gonna actually go back to. Uh, I'm not gonna reconnect things. I'm gonna go back to this this this. I'm gonna delete all of these, just so we have like our um, meatball and potatoes, uh, our uh, rooms and our hallways. And so immediately we see like this generated like a two tile wall uh, right right next to the room where I'm in here. And that means that this room um, has diminished capabilities of reconnecting in other areas. It has to go downstairs, so like here and then here to reconnect to hallways, it doesn't have a chance to go right here. So it would be great if the worm like made like a little, at least like a little appendage there towards that room. So the room had the chance to reconnect with the hallway right, right to it. So let's go to the, um, to the, where is it? Maze worm function here. here so here's we are looping through everything until we find, um, we placed all of the worms. And something I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna go at the end. I'm gonna go through all of this one more time, and I want to just highlight all of the things that are uh, can carve. So if can carve, that you can still carve, you know. Just to s I want to see like what the potential are to kind of like expand upon this, uh, and I'm gonna just set um, the color to different M set. X, Y. I'm going to set it to this gray. Oops. Um, something was wrong. Oh, um, Ken Carf needs a. Um, False, yeah, false. Okay. So you see all of these blue walls are opportunities for us to like expand upon, um, like even carve out the area even stronger. The only problem is like some certain things we actually don't want to do. Like we don't want to have situations where we, we go out of the rooms and like go like this, right? And that's bad. So what we actually want to do is from the other side. So like from the hallway, it's fine to like expand the hallway a little bit to kind of add more, more, more opportunities there. So what I want to do here is not just like if see if it's can carve, but I will also want to make sure that it's not next to a uh, to a um, 
to a room. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm generally already thinking about this. How do we do this? Because here is some, something we, when we install the doors, we, we, we check for is door. And, but the is door function now actually has become a bit more, a bit more elaborate. Um, so maybe next to room. We just make a, a new function called next to room. And again, this is bad because function costs cost tokens, but it's uh, it's maybe maybe it's worth. Um, so return next to room uh, x y. So uh, yeah, we're looking through the next to room, and then otherwise return. Just checking if this tile that we're looking at is next to a room. Okay. Um, and we're gonna use this function now to, to make sure that we are only marking the carvable tiles that are next to a, not next to a room. So if, um, where is it? Nope, this is not at rooms, this is further down. Maze, there we go, here. If can carve and <clears throat> not next to room. Uh, underscore x y. Like this. So let's see if. See, okay, so this is great because this now marks all of the spaces where you could go from a hallway closer to a room. All of these kind of like double walls that could be take, taken care of. And you can see that it actually marked some spaces that um, are double walls that would allow us more breakthrough room. Sometimes it uh, doesn't actually do that, but sometimes it does. That's great. That's something we want to do. For example, this wall here. This is great. Like if it did like a little uh, chunk in here, that's great because this would allow this tile to um, be br used for you know for reconnecting areas. Um, so yeah, we're gonna use kind of like a very similar system now to um, gather candidates for f to expand upon this worm network. So we're gonna go repeat. Um, this as well, and until the number of candidates is zero. Then we're going to add the candidate here. Um, and then we're going to just like clear it up here. So if candidate is zero, then we're going to get it, and then we're going to go m set um, c dot x, comma c dot y, comma and it's like uh, one, right? This, yeah, one. Again, I'm adding a bunch of tokens here, but I think it's worth it in this case. Um, yeah, so it, it kind of like, and again, every time it does that, it kind of like removes opportunities for other. Uh, yeah, so you see now the, the word, the, <laughs> you could say the, um, the spaghetti has become more convoluted, more chaotic. It has, it's more fuzzy spaghetti, so to speak. Yeah, you have like these these kind of like branches out here, right? These things here. And that seems horrible, but again, later on, we're gonna do the fill back in function, and th this should take care back of those again. So let's, let's bring back those functions again that we have here. So we're gonna go place flags, carve doors, so forth, and fill ends. And let, now let's see how, the, how this works. So it's difficult for us to judge if anything has changed. Oh, look at this. Again, another starting position and end position in the same room. I'm going to save the screenshot and I'm going to figure out why this happened. Yeah, again. Oh, it's, maybe it's happening more often now. So maybe that was related. Yeah, look, this is happening again now. Or was it just like... Yeah, it seems like, look... Some of these locations that we had now were this is like really close to each other, right? This is this doesn't seem to be like a, oh yeah, this is, this is very close. I wonder why it didn't set like the starting location here and then the other one. Like, it seems like it's not doing the length calculation correctly now. Let's 
like distance calculation seems like it's, it's struggling with this somehow. And I wonder if it's because somehow we screw up, screwed up the code or maybe uh, it, it has struggles to find candidates of creating the alcoves. If you have good ideas, let me know in the comment section. I will, I will get down to the bottom of this. But anyways, um, I think this should diminish the chances of us uh, ha um, encountering an isolated room. Um, so, um, yeah, if I'm gonna see an isolated room, um, I will let you guys know. I probably will have to like sit down a little bit and like discuss this a little, bit, uh, you know, where the room is. Um, so uh, discuss this where the room is. Find out where um, uh, if there if that's if that solves the problem. So something I don't like is we still kind of like, we maybe we're gonna try to get down to the bottom of this problem of that sometimes we did entrance and exit are spawned in the same location. Something that might be good here, just marking the um, the different positions that we figure out. So what I mean by that is, so when we do the start end, so first of all, there's like this random location. So let, let me do a bunch of, um, so this is, let's, let's do like this, let's copy this. Let's do like a multiple markings here. Oh, let's, let's do, let's put this green. Like this. so red is gonna be the starting location, the uh, random starting location, first of all that. So let's do like, um, um, M set PX, PY, um, this is going to be a random location that we generated as okay so generally what we're doing here just like to remind you we pick a random spot somewhere in the map then we pick a spot very far away from that spot that's going to be our starting location and then we're going to pick a spot uh, away from that location to somewhere else on the map and that's going to be our end location and we use this first random spot this red dot here just like to pick a location somewhere and the, the two is the starting location the end location is going to go and be far, very far away from from this spot um, because you know generally when you pick a random spot you you're likely to have a spot that is um, that is going to be somewhere mid-ish you know if, if if okay look this is interesting so now the red is no longer there but I'm guessing it was overwritten maybe it, it was a door that's, that could be it um, let us not make the doors Well, let's not make doors. Yeah. Okay. Good. So let us then place the other markers. So calc distance. And so now we're looking for the for the dist map, right? So let's put in here one of the dots so let's um let's put the orange one uh what was the orange one i forgot 18 okay so let's put the orange one down here okay oh that's interesting so this orange spot becomes kind of like the uh the foundation of our calculation kind of like the orange spot that we have is like the spot furthest away from the red spot and that seems like fair and then it um, places the stairs furthest away from the orange spot at a carvable spot and then places the entrance also at a carvable spot nearby the orange spot and it seems like you kind of like see the problem here now is um, the next place where we ca where that was carvable where we could put a starting point was it's actually far away from the orange spot. It should be the, our starting location should be always close to the orange spot, but it's not. Uh, this is actually really confusing. It, it's very not. So it seems like our starting location is some, some, somehow flawed. So let me see. One eternity later. Okay, so I did some experiments. I didn't show you um, on camera what I, what I did. Um, but here's here's how the game looks right like right now. This is our game now. So what I'm doing here is I try to whittle down the problem that we are having. And I think the problem is that there is no good candidates for um, for entrance and exit. And that's why you know they appear together in one room because one room actually might have like a double wall, and these are like the only candidates for us to to carve out. 
um, a niche, like an alcove for the entrance or exit. Look at the following thing here. So um, we are, uh, we look for like a spot far away and then we do like the calc dist. And then we look for something that's far away from that spot that um, is carvable, but is not walkable. Carvable, but not walkable. And if we do that for a bunch of times, um, so what we're doing, what we're looking here, the numbers are like the distance map. Uh, how far, uh, you know, this thing is, is away, you know, they're like every second tile, because if, if they were printed on every single tile, it's just like an array of numbers, so you cannot see anything. So I just print out every second tile, print, print out the distance from our starting location, which is here, to wherever we are. And you can see this is actually a good spot here. We have like a like a stairs here. So I'm gonna now loop through a little bit through a bunch of these things until we find a bad spot. So maybe this would be a good example here where it's like you see our stairs is 17 steps away from our entrance, but it's not the best, the furthest spot away on the map. Actually, you know, on the uh, up, uh, lower, uh, lower right corner, there's a 27, like it's twice as far away but there is just no good places to put the stairs there. So it opted instead for the 17 here. That's the problem. And the problem becomes even more pronounced because right now I kind of like uh, tweaked out the way I put my starting point in. But when we put the starting point in also as, as having these kind of requirements, as having to um, be in kind of like a carvable niche, then you will see that uh, it, will, it tends to bring the uh, entrance and exit together in a, a very aggressive way. So here is one of those examples, right? Um, so actually my starting point, if you look at this map, my starting point is all the way in the lower left corner. That's where we started out. That's where my guy, my starting, my, my, my dude should be all the way on the left corner. But there is just no place in the map where we can carve in without making a breakthrough to the other side. So the only places where we could actually um, carve at all is all the way on the right side. And the, because these are the only places on, in the entire map, you know, that's where it picks the starting location and the end location at the same time. So the solution here is kind of like to make sure that we are more flexible with the kind of spots that we can pick for the starting and end location. Um, so let's try to do that. Um, so first let's do the exit here. Instead of doing just the um, false, we can also do true as well. So it's kind of fine if it's like a dead end and it's not walkable, but it's also fine if it's a dead end and walkable. True. And this is a bit of an awkward situation because we have this false and true. So it might be nice if the can carve, we can just issue one can carve and not two can carve statements. But as a workaround, just to see if it works, you see um, that this will this tends to put the entrance further away. But again, our starting location is still not fixed quite yet. So let's do the same thing with the starting location. This didn't work, God damn it. <laughs> So we see now the starting location is close to where you know where the starting should be, but the exit is still not a good in a good spot. What what happened here? Ah, I have an ant. Or of course. Okay. So yeah, I went through a bunch of iterations here and it seems to be doing um, uh, well what it's supposed to be doing. So generally with your starting location, the where you start as a player should be close to a lower number in this kind of distance map and the ending location should be uh, close to the, um, to the higher numbers of this distance map. And it seems to be doing exactly that. Um, this is the only place, the first place where I encountered an issue. Uh, so now it's kind of like, I guess we are now a bit closer to the to the ending here because um, the start was supposed to be in this big um, open space and there's no good good place to, to put a starting location here in this big space. So we might actually make the starting locations even more flexible so um, so we can even start like somewhere like in a, in a way in the open. Uh, but for now, I'm, I'm kind of like happy with, with this kind of result. 
what I'm not happy about is uh, that this scan curve has become so inflexible. Um, first of all, let me remove my debugging stuff. So what I did like to draw the debugging stuff, just so you know what I did here, is I did like a loop here through our MAR distance map and made sure that I um, draw um, a number of the distance map on every second step, but that, does, that is no longer necessary. Okay. Um, and now let us uh, undo all of the debugging. So we don't need the M set here anymore. That was just like a little dot that we put on the screen just to show us where, um, where, where the different locations that we calculate um, appear. And then we can put also the stairs back into play. That's good. Okay, good. All right, so let me see, where, where are we using Ken Carve? That's that's a very prolific um, prolific function. So this is let me. So this we're using it in dig worm in two different spots, both with with a false statement. Um, this is the actual can carve. We're using it to fill the ends uh, this time with true instead of false. And we're using them here. Um, it still might be the best solution because if we if to do the can carve twice instead of doing one can carve and checking if something is walkable or not. I mean, it's, it's um, in terms of uh, in terms of processing power, it's more it takes more effort to 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 do the can carve function because it does like the entire um, um, signature comparison and you know, all the neighboring tiles. But in terms of tokens, we actually don't really save a lot, I think. So it might be worthwhile just like putting it up here. Okay, so let's bring in back the, all the procedural generation that, that we turned off in order to, 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 to test all of this. So we turn off the fill ends, uh, turn on the fill ends and turn on the install doors. Okay. Yeah, now we always, uh, we tend to start doing like these little alcoves, uh, like this little side, side alleys basically, but uh, it seems like the procedural generation is better now in that the, um, the stairs are now really far away from where we start out. <laughs> this is funny where it's like there's a door and then inside there's the stairs. I love when there's a door leading out, leading out to the stairs. That's fun. Okay, so it's, I'm gonna assume that this kind of fixed our problem, but there's still like this thing that we wrote down is maybe, um, so we kind of like did this a little bit. So I'm gonna put this, um, I'm gonna put this down. Like we kind of addressed the uh, remove isolated rooms problems. Uh, no doors to next doors is maybe also taken care of. I haven't seen that pop up again, but I think it's technically still, po still possible. Entry not in an alcove is still not technically technically solved because we're kind of still putting our entries like in these kind of like um, alleyways here. Um, but one solution would is something that we maybe stumble up next time around or in the future when we're gonna actually deal with chests and so forth. So maybe I'm not gonna address it now, but something that that's, that's some, that might be something that that comes up later on more organically. But so far, I'm I'm lacking what I'm seeing. Again, this is a bit of a shep hurting kind of situation here, where we going through uh, this level over and over again, looking for like some kind of disturbances, and then tracking them down to see you know what the problem was with the procedural generation. It's a uh, procedural generation. It's um. It's a thing that we do. Okay, guys, so on the next episode, I want to do the hub level, perhaps um, deal with that part of, of this thing, and maybe we can start thinking about monsters, items, decorations, and so forth. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Check out the Discord, uh, check out the GitHub and the downloadable file of this code in this episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.